Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Korok Seed Master Mode Challenge. We learned a lot of really interesting things about the game in today's episode as referenced by the thumbnail, so if you want to know how that works, stick around for the details on it. But as we jump into the seeds of today's video, make sure to check and see if you are subscribed to the channel. If you're not, please take a moment to do so as I bring videos to you every single day. And leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it or found it informational. So without further ado, let's jump into the seeds of today's video. So seed number 501 of our adventure is going to be a nice little set of fairy lights that we can track down here. And I just so managed to land right in front of it to the point where we could pick it up with little to no delay. So absolutely no complaints on that front. Seed number 502 is a set of leaves, and this is not the one that we will be taking out as referenced by today's thumbnail, but instead is a set that we can just take care of by shooting a fire arrow into. Mainly because, well, they're sitting in a currently dry state and the weather is clear, though it's about to take a turn for the worse if you look at the weather indicator down there in the bottom right-hand screen. No matter though, we can go ahead and pick up the rock and grab our seed and claim our reward from this location. And you already know what's gonna happen here as soon as we have that seed. We've gotta give this guy some cover, especially where there is now charred grass around him and who knows what else might walk up on top of him. Seed number 503 is a set of apples that we'll need to pick off of this tree. I've gotten a little bit more proficient at this with one minor hiccup right here where I didn't quite manage to buffer a jump before leaping off of the tree to grab that apple. And I quickly backed off of that because if you grab it at the wrong point, you're going to take down the apple you need to leave in place in order to claim the seed from this spot. Hopefully we won't be seeing too many more of these ones as I'm getting a little tired of their repetitiveness, especially where it's the exact same pattern on every single tree. But moving along to seed number 504, we have a tall pine tree that we need to climb up into. And I definitely wanted to go about this in a slightly unorthodox manner because as you see in the bottom corner, the weather in this region is currently rainy and if you buffer over into or wander over to a zone where the weather is slightly different you can circumvent that and get over to being able to access it without needing to deal with climbing a tree in the rain. Seed number 505 is down in the base of this quarry. It's one of two magnesis block puzzles that we have to complete here. And the formation here looks like it's all one solid formation, but there is the smallest little dividing line between the bottom section, which is the template, and the top section, which is the area that you need to fill out. So we'll go ahead and slide this box right into the location it needs to be. It's gonna be a little tedious because it's very specific about where it needs to be placed, but it's not angular like we've seen some of the other ones. So no worries there in terms of completing that out. And we've got ourselves yet another Kodok seed. Seed number 506 is in the same quarry, just on a different wall. And this time we need to move the block from the left-hand template to the right-hand formation. And I initially thought that it was going to be kind of a mirror inversion, uh, but instead of top to bottom, it is indeed from left to right. So after realizing the mistake, we go ahead and reposition that to the top location. And that is plenty good to get us the seed from this spot as well. I like the variation in the magnesis seed puzzles that they can be a little bit infuriating from time to time. So we can move right on along to seed number 507, which is going to be another set of fairy lights. And I believe that I have a style moblin on my tail, so I don't want to dally around here too long where I can avoid it. But easy enough, predict the pattern, grab the seed from him and move right along to, I believe this is the spring of strength or wisdom, one of the two. Either way, up along the rim at the top, there is a seed hiding underneath this rock that you can lift off of the formation. We're not gonna do anything with this spring because, well, there's not a reason or purpose to at this stage in the game. So we'll move right along to seed number 509 and you'll see that we're starting to come into cover of some rain here, but we've gotta walk around and interact with a bunch of these flower pattern puzzles here as well. And as soon as we grab the five, which are not obstructed or strewn in too crazy of a way this time around, we can claim the seed from this spot. Now seed number 510 is a little bit difficult to do on our current stamina and without any of the climbing gear which is gained from some of the shrines. You'll see that it is atop this cliff and there is a very 
quickly ticking time. And if you try and go about it in certain ways, you will actually cancel out the timer before you can actually complete it. I've sped this up so you're not slogging through the entire bit, but you'll notice that I am doing alterations of climbing up the wall and being able to walk up it as well at the areas where it's a bit more planar. Here we do a little bit of some whistle running and we just managed to get to the timer as it ticks down, which is a lot harder to do in this iteration, again, where we are experiencing some issues with not having access to Rivali's Gale or increased stamina due to the nature of the challenge we're undertaking. Seed number 511 though is hiding in this pile of discarded guardians up at the Akala Tech Lab. And that is going to be this stone that's right down here at the back of the pile. Simply pick it up and you will be able to claim the reward of your labors before dropping the rock right back down on top of this guy's head. But we're going to omit that because it's currently raining in this zone and we need to make our way up to the top of the tech lab as there is an observation platform and a lawn chair underneath a umbrella that is housing another set of fairy lights. These ones being of the kind that do not move, which really makes me happy. So we'll just interact with those ones real quick and claim the rewards from this spot before moving on to seed number 513. And this is where I had a little bit of a different thought. As I was sitting in this pile of leaves to avoid being spotted by any monsters and initially thinking to just wait out the storm, I had a thought and that is, well, it's currently lightning and thundering outside. And so what we can do is we can go ahead and drop a metal weapon here on the ground. So I go ahead and pull out my used soldier's broadsword and we go ahead and drop that down there. It's actually the knight's broadsword. We drop it in this pile of leaves and slowly walk away. And sure enough, after a very short interim, we have the lightning particles starting to uh, kick up on that sword. And as the lightning comes down, I was expecting for it to burn things away, but no, it completely clears out all of the bushes and leaves that were obstructing the rock. So we can go ahead and grab this one without needing to wait for the weather to improve because we would have been sitting here for a lot longer than I would have liked. So that was something that I learned today and hope that you benefited from as well as that is something that I don't know I've seen talked about at all. We'll drop this rock back down on top of this guy's head before going over to seed number 514 and the rain has now dissipated so we can go ahead and take a shot with our standard flame arrow which is the overall intended method of getting rid of these leaves. After claiming the seed from this location we of course drop the rock right back down on top of this guy's head as well and we can then move forward in our adventures to go out and claim seed number 515. Boink! They all have individual text readouts as well which is kind of interesting. 515 is a acorn that is hiding in the end of a log. You're intended to shoot it or otherwise hit it with one of your weapons but bombs are reusable and don't take up any of your weapon durability so I like to use those wherever I can. Seed number 516 is a balloon up atop this little rock fixture here, and I didn't quite transition over to the standard set of arrows there, so we do that as we grab the seed from this spot as well. And this next bit is not something I was looking forward to. In order to get to seed number 517 and actually clear that out, there was a big scary Lionel hiding in the way, so we needed to take him out as well. Now we've showcased a Hinox fight previously in this series, but this was my first task of taking on the most difficult mini boss outside of the Blight Ganon fights that you can have. And some may even say that this is more difficult because it has less gimmicks that you can use and employ into the fight. I do appreciate the fact that mounting the Lionel and attacking him from the backside does not gimp the overall attack output of your weapons and actually allows you to conserve your weapon durability as well, which is quite good. Now, this Lionel is being a little bit of a nuisance for us and running around, and when it comes to the weapons that we could get off of him, I don't think that he's my overall favorite. The spears are nice, but I would rather have a Savage Lionel Crusher or even a, a Savage Lionel Sword, because those ones tend to be a lot more worth it in terms of the damage output, but this is the one that we needed to clear out in order to make sure that we get ourselves the Korok Seed from this area, and you'll see why that's important as we get into it. 
But I did end up finding out that in breaking the Lionel out of his charge, you can stagger him out of that. That's an animation I hadn't really seen. But if you blow him up, he will come to a screeching halt in his charge, though he does not do that with a lot of his other attacks. We've taken some unnecessary hits here, and you'll see that we've consumed a couple of fairies in this fight as well. With that jumping up attack, you can actually run back behind him and seek some solace um, from his posterior as he doesn't buck like a horse and that is much appreciated to be sure. We take a couple more swings at him from the backside there and narrowly avoid another hit from his spear ducking underneath him there but we just managed to not be on the back side of him there. Honestly, I didn't quite notice that, and supposedly I could have recaptured that fairy, even though he just kind of revived me. I didn't really expect that to be something that you could do, but I'll have to do some more research into that to see if that is something that you can indeed do, reclaim a fairy after he has saved your life and put him back into your inventory, because that would really make my life a lot easier if indeed that is something that you can do, though uh, you would have to do it under a very specific set of circumstances to be sure. Let's go finishing out of this fight though, and we should just about be able to do so. We were on our stand-up invulnerability there, which was quite nice, and the Lionel's just got a couple of hits left in him here, and we just managed to get a headshot off on him before he starts doing anything else, and this is going to be the final mount as we finish out the fight. So first Lionel of the Hardcore series done, and pay no mind to the axe on the map in the bottom right hand corner, as yes, this did take me a couple of tries in order to take down as I'm a little bit rusty fighting Lionel's. But there's a lot of really cool stuff that we can get from these, including that Savage Lionel Spear, which has a decently high durability, a three-shot Lionel Bow, which I'm quite excited about, and we will go ahead and drop the bow that we are currently wielding in order to refresh it with a new bow with heightened durability and a triple shot as well, as that's going to be quite useful for certain scenarios. This is why we needed to take out that Lionel, as seed number 517 in our little adventure here involves rolling a boulder through the valley where the Lionel hangs out in order to put it in a hole. A bit of some large-scale Hyrule golfing, if you will. And as we get it up the hill here, we do need to make more use of our stasis. There are a couple of other puzzles like this that I've seen that you can do without taking advantage of... Uh, overusing stasis at all, but you can just use the natural flow of the terrain in order to knock it around. And with a couple of more placement shots, we do end up taking this boulder to the back side of the hill where it actually makes it a little bit easier to slide into the needed position. Uh, we missed it there and was terrified that it was going to roll too far back, but it didn't naturally come to a rest there before we needed to give it a couple more whacks. This is the last set of stasis hits as it sits and rests right here on the edge of the hole. We can just give it a little nudge into its final resting place, claim this seed, and quickly go to a more stress-free environment, as I'm not keen on going to fight any other Lynels anytime in the near future. I'd like to get a little more practice in before needing to call on that again. Seed number 518 is another set of a five pattern sequence for these flowers. This is similar to the previous one that we saw where the cluster of three is hidden a little bit further out of the way and occulted by some natural scenery, but it is very much still in a visible space and don't really have any complaints about that set of flowers that we were seeking out. Seed number 519 is actually going to be a final uh, boulder that we're going to take care of. This is one that you have to knock off of the seed that it's resting on top of. Unfortunately, it is not one that we can just push off because these boulders are a little bit larger than some of the other ones that we've seen that rest kind of similar to that, but it's all well and good. We can now grab the seed from the bottom of this uh, fissure here and claim the reward for this trial for ourselves. We'll just go ahead and drop that rock back down on top of his head and then make our way over to seed number 520, which is another rock hiding underneath something. This one is actually going to be a larger slab that we will go ahead and use a couple of our Octorock balloons on in order to lift it off, as I find that a little easier than consuming unnecessary damage uh, and weapon durability on the slab in terms of knocking it out. 
Though there is a Hinox down right below this, so you may even be able to use this slab to your advantage if you wanted to go and take that Hinox out, which we might do for fun at the beginning part of the next video next week. But that is going to do it for me today. So thanks again for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.